these are the top 10 watches that you've probably never seen before. Please remember, like and subscribe. Let's get into it. At number 10 is a mythical Rolex watch. And I say mythical because nobody actually knows if this watch is a genuine Rolex release or not. It's a GMT Master with a blue aluminium bezel, hence the nickname Blueberry. It's speculated that the blue bezels were specifically ordered for the military in the Middle East. Now, some others close to Rolex have said that Rolex never produced a GMT with a blue bezel. Some people do believe it's a genuine GMT Master Rolex with a genuine blue aluminium bezel, but it was just put on after the watch left the factory. It's hard to know if the Blueberry GMT was sold as a completely factory watch by Rolex because Rolex bezels don't have any sort of reference number, serial number, any sort of coding to identify it with the original watch. So I guess we'll never know. Regardless though, it is a beautiful watch and Rolex have probably taken inspiration from the Blueberry GMT because nowadays we see the full white gold Submariner with the blue bezel. At number nine is the Space Dweller. Yes, there is a Rolex watch called the Space Dweller and it was given to astronauts. American astronauts visited Japan in 1963 and their reception while being there was so good that for some reason Rolex decided to take an Explorer 1 and swap out the dial with a Space Dweller dial. You can literally see the writing Space Dweller on that watch. The reason why that watch is so, so rare is because Rolex only made that watch for the Japanese markets, so in such low numbers. Rolex have conquered land, the seas, the sky, and even outer space. At number eight isn't one particular watch, but instead a bunch of watches that share a similar trait, logo watches. Imagine this, right? Domino's, the pizza brand, would award managers of the company who hit sales targets a Rolex Air King with a Domino's dial on the watch, a co-branded Rolex dial with Domino's on it for hitting a target. Surprisingly, this was quite a regular thing that Rolex did with some companies, quite a, quite a lot of companies actually. Although in recent years, we rarely see a co-branded watch. I think apart from royalty, I don't think we see any company co-brand watches anymore. Interestingly, on the topic of co-brand watches, Rolex and Tiffany & Co used to have a co-brand watch. Tiffany's would sell multiple different Rolex models with the Tiffany stamp. Um, we see that still today with the Patek Philippe watches and they're incredibly desirable, but up until the early 90s, Rolex used to do the same and they are now quite the collector's item because you, they're just very hard to come by these days. In at number seven is a watch that a friend of mine actually owns. It's a one of one and it's a watch that Rolex never intended to sell. It's an error watch. And look, error watches are quite commonly known these days with the AF Daytona dial where the APH is spaced a little bit further apart and for example the GMT Master 2, the stick dial error and actually in more recent years I've seen an Oyster Perpetual 41 with a single stick at the six o'clock on the dial and I thought that was quite interesting but my friend's watch is an Explorer 1 and the error on that watch is where the number three is, or where it's supposed to be, I should say, because it actually displays the number nine. And depending on how you look at the watch, you could see a three, or you see the number nine. And this has been seen on an Air King before, but never an Explorer one. So for all I'm concerned, this watch is a super rare one of one Rolex. And I think he paid like 7,000 pounds for this watch at auction. It's very hard to value a watch like this. Guys, please let me know how much would you pay for this watch in the comments below. At number six is a super rare precious metal vintage Daytona. And no, not a 6269 or a 6270, which have seen more eyes in recent years because of some people in the watch community. Um, it's actually a 16568. This watch is a full 18 karat yellow gold watch. Now, where you typically see on a precious metal Daytona, the tachymeter engraved around the bezel, with this watch, you have factory set, baguette cut diamonds, fully wrapped around the bezel. And the dial is encrusted with parve set diamonds and just to top it off, the indices are green emeralds. And if that wasn't rare enough, there's actually a 16568 EMRO reference, which is the same watch, but it has the factory set baguette cut emeralds instead of the diamonds wrapping around on the bezel. Damn. In at number five is a watch that Rolex produced before World War II. It's a Zerograph reference 3346. The Zerograph is actually a groundbreaking watch for more than one reason. It was the first ever watch to have a rotating bezel and also it was the first ever 
in-house chronograph movement that Rolex produced. Both of those features are still ever present in today's most popular Rolex watches. By using the pusher at two o'clock, you will set the second hand at zero or 12 at the top of the dial. And only when you release your finger from the pusher will the second hand start moving uh, and start timing. Simplistic, but beautiful. It's not actually known how many of these zero graph Rolexes were made. It's believed to be around seven to 12. And I think that only four have actually been proven to still exist. At number four is the second Daytona of this top 10. And this Daytona is known as the Chairman Dial Daytona. The reason for it being nicknamed the Chairman Dial Daytona was because Rolex gifted very few of these dials to close friends of Rolex and to partners of Rolex. And this watch has only ever seen the light of day twice. First in 2013 when it was sold at Christie's for $250,000 and then in 2017 at a Philips auction and that watch sold for double what it sold for four years prior. A lot of money. The dial is a relatively basic sunburst blue color but because it was made in such a small batch it, this watch just is one of the rarest Rolex configurations we have ever seen. At number three is a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. And no, it's not the Tiffany dial that was released in 2020. Instead, it's a 1949 yellow gold 36 millimeter OP. I think the most obvious thing about this watch is that the dial has enamel painting on it. It's incredibly detailed and wonderfully colorful. And it's believed that the person who painted this watch was an enameler based in Switzerland, in Geneva, and she was also known for doing work with Patek and Vacheron. What makes this watch even more unusual though is the fact that the Rolex crown is at the bottom of the watch where the six would typically sit on the dial and the indices of the watch going around the dial are gold stars. You may have also noticed that the case is discolored. It is a yellow gold watch, but over time with oxidation, gold will react to oxygen in the air in this way. And for me, it gives the watch more character, so I like it. At number two is an 18 karat white gold day date. Now, it might not be super obvious at first glance, and often is the case with a vintage watch, you have to look closer. This white gold day date has a dial that looks awfully similar to an Explorer 1, and with it having a smooth bezel, it actually does closely resemble a Tudor Black Bay 41. But interestingly, and what makes this watch very special is the fact that these are not day date hands. In fact, these are sports hands, hands that you would typically see on a Submariner, not a day date. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only example of a day date that has sports hands. What also makes this watch unique is the fact that the client specifically ordered the watch to this exact specification. It was the result of his own ideas, his own creativity, and I don't think Rolex allow that too often. At number one is the Baodai Rolex. Baodai was the last emperor of Vietnam and the origin story of this watch gives me chills. In 1954, Baodai was in Switzerland and like we all do, we pay a visit to the AD that is in town and he looked at all the watches that Rolex presented to him and none of them took his fancy. So what he said next was one of the most amazing things ever. He said, I want the rarest and most precious Rolex ever made. Quite a simple request to Rolex, not one that you can casually just drop on an AD these days, but he was the emperor of Vietnam. So like, why not take a good stab at it, right? Better believe that the request was met with the highest offer. The Rolex AD presented the emperor with a yellow gold 6062. And this was only one of three black dial models to be set with diamond markers. And here's the thing, two of which were set with six diamond markers on the dial, but his had five making it a completely unique watch just for the last emperor of Vietnam. I'm interested to know what you guys think are the rarest Rolex watches, so please comment below. Again, like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.